Hello everyone, welcome to Kumari's Kids channel. Today's story is going to be Simba the Lion King. The sun came up over the African plain, hot and brilliant, just as it had done since the beginning of time. Today, first rays of the morning sun fell on, on an astonishing sight. Across the vast bright lands, animals moved in great herds, heading for a sick single destination elephants plodded steadily antelope leaped through the grass giraffes locked cheetahs raised ants marched in a single line while huge flocks of flamingos wing across the sky they were all journeying to pride rock to celebrate the birth of King Mufasa's son. Above the gathering on top of Pride Rock, Rafiki, the wise old mystic, approached King Mufasa and Queen Sarabi. He cracked open a gourd, dipped his fingers in the liquid and made a special mark on the infant's forehead. Then he carried the cup to the edge of the rock and held it high. A loud cheer rose from the plain elephants trumpeted. Monkeys screeched. Zebras, rhinos, and a host of other animals stamped their hoofs. Then a hush fell over the gathering. Together, the animals of Mufasa's kingdom knelt before Simba your new prince. Yet one family member did not attend the ceremony. Mufasa's brother, Scare, has, had spent the entire morning toying with a mouse. He was just about to eat, eat it when Zazu, the king's majedoma, appeared Stalet scare turned and the mouse scrambled away. Now look, Zazu, you have made me lose my lunch. Scare complained. You you lose more than that when the king gets through with you. But Scare wasn't listening. He was still hungry and Zazu was beginning to look pretty tasty. Scare pounced, but before he had time to eat Zazu, a wise commander dropped him. Scare released the bird. Why, if it isn't my big brother, he sneered. Sarabi and I didn't see you at the presentation of Simba. Mufasa said, is anything wrong? That was today. Scare said, oh, I feel simply awful. It must have slipped my mind. Well, as slippery as your mind is, you are the king's brother, Zazu reminded. Zazu also reminded Scare that he should have been the first in the line to congratulate his brother. I was the first in line until the little hairball was born. 
the little the handball is my son mufaza reminded him and your future king i shall practice my crusty scarce then he turned his back on them and walked away the days passed and simba grew from an infant into a cub one morning before the dawn mufaza led simba to the top of the pride rock as the sun edged over the horizon mufaza said simba look everything the light touches is our kingdom a king's time as ruler rises and falls like the sun one day the sun will set on my time he will set on my time here and will rise with you as the new king and this will all be mine wow said simba looking around but what about that shadowy place mufaza turned to his son that is beyond our borders you must never go there simba as they wandered away from pride rock mufaza said simba everything you see exists together in a delicate balance as a king you will need to understand that balance and respect all the all creatures because we are all connected in a great circle of life the young cub tried to listen but a grasshopper caught his eye and he chased chased after it just then zazu arrived with the morning report so he addressed muzaffa hyenas have crossed into the pride lands quickly the king ordered his majedoma to take simba home oh dad ah can't i come simba whined no son his father replied and he took off the dark took off after the dark shapes in the distance after zazu made sure that simba was home the oh, sorry after zazu made made sure that simba was home safely he the excited cub found scare sunning himself on a rock hey uncle scare simba cried my dad showed the whole kingdom and i'm going i'm going I'm going to rule it all scarce called then slowly he began to smile so your father showed you the whole kingdom did he did he show you what's beyond the rise of at the border no said simba he said i can't go there and he's absolutely right scare replied it's far too dangerous only the bravest of lions go there an elephant graveyard is no place for young prince an elephant what simba wow simba oh, an elephant what said simba wow oh dear I have said too much said scare grinding slyly just do me one favor he added promise me that you will never visit the dreadful place 
And remember, it's our little secret. As Scab backed away, Simba stared at the distance spot on the horizon. He had no idea that Scab had cleverly set a trap to rid himself of the future king forever. Simba knew that he would be disobeying his father if he went into the elephant graveyard but had had an uncle said uncle scare said that only the bravest of lions dare venture the venture there wouldn't dare be proud of such a brave cub though thought simba soon after simba went in search of his best friend nala he was happy to find nala with her mother sarafina and queen sarabi mom he said to sarabi i just heard about this great place can nala and i go where is this place simba his mother asked oh near the water hole the cup fibbed uncle scare and had said it was a secret all right said sarabi as long as sazu goes with you not sazu thought simba he'll spoil everything As Sazu led the way, Simba whispered to Nala, "We have got to ditch him. We are we are not going to the water hole. We are going to an elephant graveyard." When Sazu looked back and saw them whispering, he said, "Just look at you two. Your parents will be thrilled. One day you two are going to be." Mary it's a tradition Mary ha huh? forget it it said Simba i can't marry her she's my best friend and besides i when i'm king i'll do just as i please zazu shook his head with that attitude you will be a pretty pathetic king Simba laughed at Zazu. I can't wait to be king, the cub shouted, and he scrambled away across the plains. Nala followed, and the two of them darted in and out of herds and escaped from Zazu. It worked. We lo- we lost Zazu, said Simba. laughing now we can look for the elephant graveyard in the spirit of victory simba playfully leaped for nala but she was too quick for him and flipped him onto his back together they tumbled down a hill until they landed with a thud next to them was a huge elephant skull this is it we made it said simba wow exclaimed nala it's really creepy come on said simba let's check it out before they could climb into the skull zazu caught up with them we are way beyond the boundary pride of lands he said and right now we are all in a very real danger i laugh in the face of danger said the brave lion cub ha 
ha ha replied the elephant skull then out of the skulls cavernous eye holes pop three slobbering hyenas baring their fangs with wide gr grins the hyenas crept towards the trespassers they grabbed zanzu first why don't you pick on somebody you own your own size simba shouted the hyenas dropped zanzu and raced after the cubs when Z senji threatened nala simba swift his claws across the hyenas nose The hyenas raced after the cubs who found themselves trapped inside the bones of an elephant's rib cage. Then the angry hyenas advanced toward Simba, their sharp teeth gleaming. A giant paw suddenly struck Zenzi, sending her and the other hyenas into a pile of bones not far from where simba waited a herd of wild bees grazed not far from the herd three hyenas waited too they were waiting for a signal from scare zanzi saw him first there he sees Let's go. The hyenas ran toward the wild beasts, sensing danger. The herd panicked and stamped into the gorge straight toward Simba. Nearby, Mufasa and Zazu noticed the dust rising from the gorge. Mufasa scared, yelled, appearing from behind a rock. quick stampet simba chimbas down there with no thought for his own safety the lion king leaped into the gorge and snatched the cub out of the path of deadly hooves Mufasa jumped onto a rocky le ledge and set Simba down. Suddenly, Mufasa felt the rocky wall tremble beneath his his hind paws. He fell back into the herd, badly hurt. He tried to climb another cliff. Looking up, he saw a scare. "Brother, help me!" Mufasa pleaded. Scare leaned toward Mufasa and pulled him close. Long live the king! He whispered. Then let go. Mufasa lost his grip and disappeared beneath the mass of moving animals. Unaware of what Scare had done, Simba. saw his father fall when the wild beasts were gone the cup raced down into the dust fill gorge there simba found his father he nuzzled the motionless body but the great lion king was dead scare appeared beside simba What have you done? He said. He tried to save me. The cup answered. If it weren't for you, your father would still be alive. Scarce nailed. Run away, Simba. Run away and never return. Confused and heartbroken, Simba began to run. 
He did not see the hyenas join scare or hear his uncle give the order to kill him. When Simba opened his eyes again, the burning sun and the vultures were gone. But a murkut and a wet hog were standing over him. You okay, Kiki Kit? said Murkut. You nearly died, said the wet hog. We saved you. Thanks for your help, Simba replied. He stood on a wobbly legs and started to leave. The market called after the shaggy cub. Where you from? It doesn't matter, Simba said quietly. Then he admitted. I did something wrong. I did something terrible, but I don't want to talk about it. Then you are an outcast, cried Murkett. So are we. My name's Timon and this is Pumba. Take my advice, kid. You gotta put your past behind you. No past, no future, no worries. Hakuna Matata. The market called after the shaky cub. Where are you from? Time passed in the carefree company of his new friends. Simba grew into a young lion. One night, while the three of them were gashing, the, at the stars, Simba said, Someone told me that the great kings of the past are up there watching over us. Pumba and Timba laughed. Who'd have told you a crazy thing like that? said Timon. Simba, thinking of his father, was silent. The next day, as Simba was wandering through the jungle, he heard his friend shout for help. Simba hurried toward the sound. Pumba was caught beneath the trunk of fallen tree and Timon was trying to protect him from a hungry lioness. The next day, as Simba was wandering through the jungle, he heard his friends shout for help. Simba hurried toward the sound. Pumba was caught beneath the trunk of a fallen tree. And Timon was trying to protect him from a hungry young lioness. As she leaped, Simba threw himself forward and knocked the lioness aside for a moment. They tussled, then the lioness pinned him to the ground and stared down at him. Simba, he said assistantly. Nala, he replied. As the lions hugged Timon, cried, what's going on here? Simba laughed and introduced Nala to his friends. She smiled politely, but he could not stop staring at Simba. Finally, she said, everyone thinks you are dead. Yes, Dad told us about this tempest. What else did he tell you? Simba asked cautiously. What else matters? Nala exclaimed. You are alive, and that means you are the king. 
king? cried Timon and Pumbaa in surprise. Excusing themselves, and Simba and Nala stroll into the jungle. Scare, let the hyenas take over the pride lands, Nala said. Everything dis everything's destroyed. There's no food, no water. Simba, if you don't do something soon, everyone will starve. I can't go back, he insisted. Nala did not understand why Simba refused to accept the responsibility and help the pride. What's happened to you? She asked. You're not the Simba, I remember. You're right, I'm not, he said. Now, are you satisfied? Before he turned to leave, Simba added angrily, Listen, you think you can just show up and tell me how to live my life? You don't even know what I've been through, Nala called after him. But Simba ignored her. That night, while the others slept, Simba sat on a rock and gashed up at the twinkling sky. I don't care what anybody says, he said aloud. What would it prove anyway? I, I, it won't change anything. You can't change the past. Then Simba heard a strange sound somewhere in the jungle. Someone was chanting in a sing-song voice. As if from nowhere, the bent figure of an old baboon appeared. Who are you? Simba asked, slightly annoyed. The question is, who are you? said the baboon. Simba thought for a moment, then sighed. The old baboon said, I know your father. My father is dead. Simba replied, No, nope, said the baboon. He's alive. I'll show him to you. Just follow old Rafiki. He knows the way. The old baboon led Simba to a clear, smooth, Pool. Look down there, Rafiki advised. In the pool, Simba saw only his reflection. Look harder, the baboon insisted. A breeze rippled the water. When the pool became still, Simba stared at the face of his father. You see, Rafiki said, he lives in you. Simba heard a voice call his name and he looked up and saw the image of his father in the stars. Look inside yourself, Simba, said his father's image. You're more than what you have become. You must take your place in the circle of life. Remember who you are. You are my son and the one true king. Remember, the vision faded. Simba remained alone thinking. The next morning, Nala, Timon and Pumba looked all over for Simba. Finally, Rafiki caught up with them. You won't find Simba here, the baboon said. The king has returned. Timon asked, what do you mean? He's gone back to challenge his uncle, Nala exclaimed. <coughs> Ahead of them, Simba moved swiftly toward Pride Rock. He, as he crossed over into the homeland, he saw ruin, devastation 
everywhere. For a moment, Simba hesitated. Then he left a fresh wind and saw rain clouds gathering on the horizon. With renew renewed hope, he continued his journey. Soon Nala joined him. As did Pumba, and even Timon, as they approached Pride Rock, they saw some hyenas, Pumba, and Timon stayed behind to divert the pack. Nala went to find the lioness while Simba forged on alone in the search of his mother. Meanwhile, a pride rock scare Regine without shame. Where is your hunting party? He shrieked at Sarabi. Where is your hunting party? There's no food, she replied. The herds have moved on. We have only one choice. We must leave Pride Rock. We are not going anywhere, he growled. Sarabi replied. Then you are sentencing us to death. Then so be it. I, I am the king and I make the rules. If you are, if you are half the king, Mufasa was. Sarabi began and red scare struck her and she fell. A tremendous roar echoed among the rocks. Scare rolled and saw a great lion before him. Mufasa, he said gasping, not, it can't be, you're dead, weak and delirious. Scare backed away from the ghost. What do you want? he cried. Why are you here? Go away, go, leave me alone. Although many years have passed, Sarabi still recognized her son, Simba. She said quietly, You are alive? Then Simba saw scares crawling up Pride Rock. Simba dashed up the steep face, dodging fire and smoke. This time he trapped Scare at the edge. Simba, you don't understand, Scare insisted. I didn't kill your father. It was the hyenas. They are the enemy. Now they, that you are back, Together we can defeat them. Run away, scare, Simba commanded, repeating the advice his uncle had once given him. Run away and never return, scare started to slink away, but then he turned and lunged for Simba. Acting swiftly, Simba hurled scare off the cliff. The sound of hungry hyenas drifted up from the gorge, revealing scarce, awful fate. As rain began to fall, Simba climbed to the top of the pride rock. Then the clouds parted, revealing a star filled the sky. Simba roared trumpetly, and all who heard him reacted with joy. Soon, under the rule of wise and brave king, the pride lands flourished. The herds returned to their grace and food was plentiful once again. Soon that animals gathered once more to celebrate the birth of king's son. Simba and Nala watched proudly as Rafiki held their new cup high over the pride rock. As the morning sun touched the African plain, Simba thought of something his father had once told him. 
a king a king's time as a ruler rises and falls like the sun one day the sun will set on my time and rise up rise with you as the new king some day simba would pass on these same words to his own son continuing the unbroken circle of life thank you for watching this is the end of simba the lion king story